Hi, so my name's Lucy. Over the couple of minutes, we'll talk about the impact of melt sodium on liver allocation outcomes. So, liver transplants, as with any solid organ transplants, it's limited by a lack of supply. So that's why we want to preferentially give transplants to those who are the sickest, as they will benefit the most. Now, to define sickness in the liver transplant population, we largely depend on the model for end-stage liver disease, or MELD score. MELD is a standardized score that uses your latest creatinine, INR, and bilirubins to compute it into a standardized value. The higher your MELD score, the sicker your liver uh, is presumed to be, and the more uh, regional and national organ sharing opportunities that this unlocks. Now, starting in 2016, sodium was added to how we calculate the MELD score. The reason for that is because hyponatremia was found to be an independent risk factor for death for those waiting on the transplant list. So that's why sodium was added to this score. Now, while we change the way we calculate MELD, um, the numerical guidelines that guide either increased regional or national organ sharing, those guidelines have not changed. And specifically, we want to talk about the SHARE 15 rule. And what this is, is that it's a UNOS policy that states if you had an organ available for transplant, it will preferentially go to somebody with a MELD score greater than 15, either locally or regionally, before it returns to your local center to be transplanted in someone with a MELD score less than 15. So the rationale behind this SHARE 15 rule came from a study conducted by Marion in 2005. And basically what they showed in that study is that there is a cutoff for which underneath the certain MELT score, you do not benefit from transplant. And specifically, they found it was a MELT score less than 15, where um, those individuals will actually have lower mean survival compared to somebody who was on the wait list and did not receive a transplant and um, they had less, like, lower mean survival. And that's why um, the SHARE 15 rule was placed in 2005. And this rule has not been re-evaluated since 2005. And that leads us to the objectives of this study. First off, we wanted to understand what was the impact of being hyponatremic in this new meld sodium era? How did wait list and transplant outcomes differ in this new contemporary era? And finally, how does survival benefit change and do the cutoffs for survival benefits shift in this new era? To do this, we fitted various multivariable models that have been well validated in the literature. And um, all of our findings are adjusted for it by various recipient and donor factors listed below here. Data from this study comes from the UNO STAR file, which is a national registry of all transplants in this country. Inclusion criteria are all deceased adult liver uh, or liver kidney waitlist registrations, and exclusion criteria includes regrafts, exception scores, status one listings, and a non-kidney simultaneous transplants. We defined a MELD era, that is from June 18, 2013, up until January 2016, and the MELD sodium era is from January 2016 up until September 2017. Waitlist outcomes are evaluated at 90 days. Transplant outcomes are evaluated at one year. And anybody who doesn't fit the criteria I listed above are censored appropriately at um, correct times. So this uh, table shows the baseline characteristics of waitlist and transplant uh, characteristics of this population. 34,000 individuals roughly were included in our study, 18,000 in the MELD era, about 14,000 in the MELD sodium era. This highlights the score distributions at, wait, at listing and transplant. So green is the MELD sodium era. And you can see that at transplant, uh, the, uh, the MELD score shifted towards a slightly lower MELD category. Looking at the impact of hyponatremia on waitlist outcomes, the top row here is the MELD era, and this is various degrees of uh, hyponatremia. You can see that in the MELD era, if you are hyponatremic, you are, at a, you are at an increased risk of dying on the wait list. And this is across all levels of hyponatremia. And you can see if you had low MELD scores and you were hyponatremic, you were su uh, significantly at a disadvantage in terms of waitlist mortality. Looking at the MELD sodium era, which is this bottom row here, you can see that the impact of being hyponatremic has decreased slightly. And you can also see that if you had low MELD sodium scores, you were no longer at a significant risk for uh, uh, weightless mortality. So we can say that uh, in the melt sodium system, we successfully protected those who were hyponatremic and had low melt scores. Now, uh, in brief, 
wait, 90 day waitlist mortalities were significantly decreased when we transitioned to the melt sodium era. And uh, this does not affect one year graph loss when comparing between the two eras. And finally, when we're trying to evaluate survival benefit of transplant, remember that survival benefit compares the hazard of dying on the, uh, of those who receive the transplant compared to somebody on the wait list with a similar MELD score that did not receive a transplant. So if your hazard ratio is over one, that means you do not receive a survival benefit from transplant. So looking at this graph, blue is the MELD era. You can see that roughly at MELD scores above 15, you can see a survival benefit of transplant. Now, when we evaluate this in the melt sodium era, which is the green, you can see that you don't see a significant survival benefit until you are above melt scores of roughly above 21. And when we compare the findings of the Marion study compared to what we found here, it's that the rationale for share 15 is no longer as clear. We can see that um, you don't see a survival benefit until a MELD score above 21. So based on our findings, we propose that instead of a share 15 rule, we should consider using share 21 to raise the cutoff from 15 to 21. This way to enable a greater access to transplantation and to ensure an actual survival benefit for patients. So this slide concludes the findings of our study. First is that the impact of hyponatremia is no longer as uh, obvious in the new melt sodium era. 90-day waitlist mortality decreased in the melt sodium era without affecting one-year transplant outcomes. And finally, the survival benefit of melt sodium seems to have shifted towards a higher score range in this new era. So thank you to my mentors, and at this point I'd be happy to take any questions.